So since we're already at the halfway mark of the year, I thought it'd be a good time to do sort of like a mid-year review and take stock of how um, I've been doing in terms of the portfolio as well as uh, our goals for the, ourselves and the family. And also share uh, my plans for the rest of uh, 2022 in the second half. And, yeah, and then we can revisit this video at the end of the year to see how we're tracking against those uh, goals. Yeah, so in today's video, I want to talk about our portfolio update in terms of uh, investments as well as our CPF. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the goals I have uh, in terms of finances, uh, health and work as well as um, uh, blogging and this YouTube channel. And then I'll share a little bit about the, my vision uh, for this channel going forward. So in terms of portfolio um, value, if you're an investor like me and you're familiar with what's happening in the markets in the first half of 2022, um, you probably know that the markets have not been doing very well. And that is reflected in our portfolios as well. So generally, I have uh, split the, my funds, my investment funds into two main portfolios. One is for the family portfolio which is uh, more geared towards family needs as well as our retirement. And then I have a separate fund for my personal portfolio. That's sort of my own money and I can take a sort of higher risk with this uh, bucket of funds. Right, so taking a look at the numbers, um, our, our family portfolio is currently uh, around 180K uh, and it's down from around 200K. Um, and if you include the uh, 40k that we have uh, injected in terms of capital into the portfolio. The portfolio is actually down by 60k just from the start of the year and that's a drawdown of around 25%. As for my personal portfolio, is the value is much less around only about 50k and it's down from around 70k since the start of the year. And I've injected around 13k worth of capital so in total, we're, I'm down at around I'm down I'm down around thirty three k, and that's around forty percent of a drawdown. So that's much bigger than the family portfolio as well. Right. So in total, we've lost about ninety three k, um, and this is in Sing dollars. So it's close to about hundred thousand really, just in, since the beginning of the year because the market drawdown so far. And these losses are really painful and demoralizing, but. I think it's important to continue to invest for the long term and also because we still have quite a long journey ahead of us until retirement so we continue to contribute uh, funds to our investments uh, on a monthly basis and we're planning to um, contribute at least uh, 60k a year um, to our investment portfolio so hopefully that will continue to grow and snowball give us uh, enough funds for a comfortable retirement. So in terms of portfolio strategy, for the family portfolio, I'm looking at um, adding more index funds and ETFs and to focus less on individual stocks. Uh, for those individual stocks that I'm holding, they are mostly for growth for the long term. And I've also added some uh, crypto into the portfolio, but that's really a small part of the portfolio. And I've taken off most of the short-term hedges out of the portfolio as well. And then for the po personal portfolio, I'm actually still holding only a few handful of stocks, you know, mostly bullish on Tesla and uh, Palantir, which is also which are also two popular stocks amongst uh, YouTubers and um, the FinTwit community. I've also added some short-term hedges. Uh, in this portfolio, namely the SQQQ, which is the inverse ETF for uh, the NASDAQ 100, and then the SARK, which is the inverse ETF for uh, the ARK ETF. And lastly, I'm also dabbling a little bit at the site uh, in options trading, mainly trying to earn a little bit of income through selling covered calls or selling puts. So usually, uh, I don't talk much about my personal portfolio in a blog or YouTube because um, mainly because those are really high risk, uh, high risk strategies and more of experimentation that I'm doing, um, and they probably tend to lose money rather than earn money at this point of time. 
And then lastly, not forgetting our CPF. Um, the strategy for that one is that um, we want, both my wife and I want to max out the uh, annual contribution. Uh, that's around, I think, 37 or 38K for the year. And we'll continue to aim to max out that contribution every year. And, and we've also both contributed around 4K each to the uh, voluntary housing refund to pay back the CPF funds that we've used for our HDB. So, so far that 4K is only about one year's worth of uh, housing repayments. So at the end of the year, we'll take a look and if there's any additional funds, we'll also try to pay back even more to reduce the um, capital that we owe as well as the accrued interest that's uh, accumulating in CPF. And so also for the CPF OA funds, we'll do an exercise every uh, once or twice a year to transfer anything above the 20k um, balance in OA over to our SA to earn a higher interest. And uh, we can do that because I think we don't have any plans to upgrade to a bigger 4 or 5 room flat HDB just yet. Right, so that's it for the portfolio update part. Um, you can follow my blog for more regular portfolio updates. Uh, I'll place the link below in the description. Right, so in terms of goals, I'll split, I've split them into five main areas that I'm looking at. Um, there'll be finances, uh, family, health, uh, work, as well as uh, blogging and YouTube. So first up, in terms of finances, I'm focused right now on tracking our expenses uh, versus our budget that we've set, uh, mainly due to the rising inflation. And I think that we will seeing uh, we'll be seeing our expenses increasing as well. And I want to know how our expenses are affected. Then arising from that exercise, as we tr as I track the expenses, hopefully I can gain some insights make the necessary adjustments or sacrifices when necessary to keep our costs under control um, and also try to find ways to reduce our discretionary expenses uh, in preparation for um, a possible recessionary environment and also I like to um, rely less on using credit cards and move most of our expenses over to debit cards or pay now or pay la so that um, I can see what uh, I can see the direct effect of what I'm spending within that month itself and not push it over to the next month. And so in terms of family goals, I, I want to spend more time with my young kids and be more intentional and present with them um, during their playtime when they're learning or even when bring them more outdoors. So right now I have two young kids, aged one and three and um, you know, I just feel that they are growing up really fast and this is an um, important time for me to dedicate um, my time and attention uh, when they need it the most. We also want to take the chance to travel a bit more with our family during off-peak periods in the next two to three years before my older girl goes to primary school. And then I want to set a vacation budget and as well as to be willing to spend more on travel experiences. And for my health goals in terms of fitness, I want to aim to run at least three times a week, uh, mainly during lunch times. Um, as well as for uh, my diet, I want to try to reduce the portions that I eat for lunch. And I'm also trying this 12-12 uh, intermittent fasting where I have 12 hours where I can eat and then I need to be fasting for the next 12 hours, basically half the day. In terms of work, uh, the volume of work has been picking up uh, gradually but currently it's still pretty manageable. So far I've still been working from home but uh, there are plans to return to the office real soon. Um, so I'll, I'll probably need to make uh, a few adjustments to our schedule as well because my commute to the office is actually pretty long. So in terms of blogging, I intend to blog um, at least twice a week um, and this will be more of a educational, informative or evergreen content and I'll try to keep the content, I'll try to focus on content that's like long form and data heavy in the blog. Yeah, so for the blog, I think I can uh, aim to blog a little bit more often than shooting videos because I think it's easier to find pockets of time to write, especially when I have a 
for young kids right now who require quite a bit of attention and, and it's pretty difficult to find long periods outside of work to really to really focus. Yeah, so in terms of video, I have sort of been neglecting this uh, YouTube channel for quite some time, but I do intend to um, try to shoot and uh, post a video at least once a month. Um, but in terms of content, um, I think I want to focus more on uh, personal sharing uh, and my thoughts in video because I think it's easier to articulate. Um, the rest of the content on video will probably be lighter and I want to reserve the sort of deeper and heavier content for the blog. And maybe I'll try a strategy of sort of um, um, having a shorter form in terms of YouTube and then redirecting it to the blog for, uh, for you know, deeper and further uh, analysis. Right, so in terms of video, it's been difficult for me to shoot you know, over the past uh, half a year because I don't really have a proper venue at home to shoot my videos, especially when the kids are asleep. And also because I, after shooting a few videos, I actually realized it's, it's, it's pretty involved in terms of post-processing and it takes a lot of time for me to edit the videos. Right, so my vision for the blog and YouTube channel is that I want to share relatable um, experience and provide um, information that's valuable um, to you guys. And I also want to you know, use these uh, channels to, co to connect with people as well as to you know contribute to the finance community, the personal finance community, and to maybe even build a community um, where we can you know grow and share together about personal finance topics. Right? For me personally, I enjoy like sharing through the blog and video because I think it also helps me think through and articulate my thoughts um, better. Then I realize I've actually learned many things and gained. Uh, deeper insight into the issues that I've been writing or shooting videos about. Right, so as I mentioned, maybe for YouTube, I might be focusing more on shorter format content. Um, maybe just to share my quick thoughts on certain topics and maybe to direct viewers to my blog for maybe deep, deeper analysis. So I'm still experimenting um, with this. So uh, I welcome any feedback that you have. Do, do let me know in comments. Right, so to the 107 subscribers to this uh, YouTube channel, thank you so much for subscribing. I'd love to get to know who you guys are. Right? So the way YouTube is set up is that there isn't much info on the users uh, in terms of their social profiles. So um, I'll, I'll be really glad if you guys reach out to me in the comments or uh, through my blog. Right? Right, so you're not, if you're not a subscriber to this channel yet, do feel free to su subscribe. And uh, if you're already a subscriber, you know, do reach out to me in the comments. Let me know why did you subscribe to my channel, um, and also what kind of content um, or info would you be looking out for? Um, yeah, do let me know. All right. So just wrapping up, I think the first half of twenty twenty two has been tough for um, me, and it seems like it's been tough for many others as well. Um, so I don't know about you how you've been doing, the, right? But whatever it is. Um, I think the important thing is that we, we don't give up and that we don't lose sight of our long-term goals. And I think we can focus on preparing for tougher times ahead and not just um, you know, hide our heads in the sand. Um, although we might not necessarily be totally expecting it, it's good to be prepared. And I think it's a good time for us to sort of re uh, take this time to recalibrate our personal financial goals and uh, reset our priorities and for me personally i really want to um, focus on what's really important to me um, focus on my priorities it also mainly be uh, family my relationships as well as my health and, and i want to spend less time checking on my portfolio and worrying about finances right so that's it for today's video i, I tried to keep it short but i think it's longer than i expected but do let me know in the comments, you know, how, how's your portfolio doing and what are your goals for the rest of uh, the year 2022. Right, so take care guys and I'll see you in the next video.